Right, so before we start the video, I just want to point out that these are just my personal opinions on what are the worst things about this TV. Some of you guys may not agree, and that's fine. And some of these things may not be relevant to you. You might just think they're just minor sort of things, which is fair enough. But to other people, they may be more of a big deal. And just remember that these videos are to help you guys. I'm not here just to slate the TV because I have also done a best things about it. So please go and check out that video as well because you know there's two sides to every coin and I always like to give a fair and honest opinion about the pros and the cons. Also, I want to say that um, unfortunately, in my previous Worst Things About video, I received a lot of negativity. I got a lot of people being personally abusive to me because they simply didn't like I was saying negative things about the TV. And, uh, yeah, just, you know, don't take it personally. It's, you know, it's just a downside to a TV at the end of the day. There is not a perfect product out there. Everything has a positive and a negative side. So please respect my opinions. So with all that said, I think it's now time to crack on with a video. Right, so the first worst thing about this TV is, gotta be the biggest one out there, burning. So yeah, this is the major Achilles heel to an OLED TV, and that is that they can potentially get burning. Now, this has probably gotta be the most ask question I get from people in my comments is you know will I get burning how long does it take before you know the tv gets burning I'm put off by these tvs because of burning and yeah it is a real nightmare there are measures in these tvs to help prevent burning and if you was to use this tv I'd say in I'll use the term loosely in a normal way then you shouldn't have any problems but if you sort of person who will maybe watch, say, Sky Sports or something like that for hours and hours and hours on end, day in, day out, where you've got, you know, logos up in the corner or ticker tapes going across the screen all the time, there is a chance that you will get burning on the TV. It isn't guaranteed you're going to get it. If, you know, you, you sort of like look after your TV, if I, again, use that uh, term loosely, then, you know, you should be okay. But over long periods of time, like I said, with those static logos and that building up, then potentially, you know, you could damage the screen. So that is the first downside of this TV, and that is potential burning. So next downside of this TV is the worry of burning. Now you're gonna say, well, hold on, ain't that the same sort of thing really? But the amount of people that I know have been put off by buying these TVs because of that burning risk is unbelievable. Um, and the problem with it is that LG do not warrant burning, um, or should I say openly warrant it. Now I've heard of cases where people have had burning on TVs and they have had the, the panel swapped out, but on paper, they won't cover it. Well, certainly not here in the UK and most other parts of the world that I've heard from you guys. And uh, yeah, it is a shame. And that puts a hell of a lot of people off because, you know, if you've had this TV six months and you get burning, you know, according to them officially, they're gonna wipe their hands of that, of that TV and say, sorry, you know, that's that at the end of the day. So that is a major downside of this TV, that it isn't warranted against burning. Right, so the next downside to this TV is, well, it's something that's actually missing from the TV as opposed to something that the TV has got. And that is, um, it's not got a dedicated Apple TV app. Now, fair enough, LG have included Apple AirPlay 2 this year, which, you know, is handy, but it would just be far better if they put a proper Apple TV app um, on the TV. Now, Samsung managed to do it, and they even managed to put it onto their older model TVs, but LG, you've got to have the latest model TV, and then you only get AirPlay. You don't get the um, actual app, so you have got to have a iPhone, iPad, or something like that around to able 
so you can cast to the TV, which yes, it is good when it works, but the problem is it is a bit sketchy sometimes. It's not the most reliable, and I've had instances where it just won't work properly, and I know other people have had problems with setting it up. So it's not a perfect system, and I think it'd just be a lot better and seamless if it had a proper dedicated Apple app. So that's the next downside about this TV. So the next worst thing about this TV is the remote control. Yep, it's one of my uh, pet hates about this TV. I have a love-hate relationship with the thing. Now, don't get me wrong. You know, function-wise, it is amazing. It's a magic pointer and, that, and it works a treat. But my God, the form of it is just naff, if you ask me. I just think it looks like something from Poundland. And, you know, like you get in, you know, your bargain basement TVs, not a top of the range TV like this. You know, if you're going to produce such a beautiful TV, then why skimp on the remote? You know, it's like buying, say, a Ferrari and being given a key fob for a Ford Cortina. Do you know what I mean? It's just an absolute joke. Again, dare I say it, Samsung do a beautiful remote with their TV. So why LG have cheaped out on it? You know, it would only cost a few quid more just to design it to look a bit better. I mean, some people might say, you know, it's only a remote control at the end of the day. Yeah, that's fine. It's, you know, some people it's not a big deal. But to me, you know, I think it should at least match the TV. You know, something you hold all the time and that. And uh, it could just look a lot better. It's made out of really cheap plastic that scratches really easily the way it's designed it just wants to you know when you know a lot of people put it on the arm of the sofa like i do and all it wants to do is roll off it's like an egg so yeah it is not ideal and i just hope one day they actually just put a decent remote with the tv like i said it's not the end of the world at the end of the day but you know it's the small things that are you know make up the overall experience and I feel that you know it just lets it down so that is the next downside about this TV and that is the remote control so next downside to this TV is it's another one of me pet eights and anyone who follows the channel will know this one it's only got a one and a half meter cable for a 65 inch TV I mean are they having a laugh or something is it's suddenly cable gone up in price I mean why they only give you a one and a half meter cable for a TV that is pretty much longer than the cable is, I've got no idea. So it is fixed over one side, and if you've got a socket over the other side, it just ain't going to reach. Now, a lot of people will say, again, oh, just buy an extension lead and things like that. Um, but you shouldn't have to at these sort of prices. Do you know what I mean? They should either make a longer lead, you know, I reckon at least three to five meters long, or Make it so you can take the lead out the back and put a longer one in. But no, they fix it in. So that means you have to run an extension lead up the back or have it so close to a socket, you know, it's pretty much at the back of the TV. Um, so, yeah, I've got an extension lead that I just hook over the back there. Um, again, this is sort of a temporary setup at the moment because obviously I'm just being loaned this TV. But, yeah, it's not an ideal solution. And... Uh, I just think that for a few pounds, they could just extend that cable and it solve a lot of problems for a lot of people. I know a hell of a lot of people that have turned around to me and have been grateful that I pointed out it's only got a metre and a half lead because then they've been able to go out and get an extension lead in preparation for the delivery of their TV. Because again, there's been a hell of a lot of people who've told me that they only found out once they'd had the TV delivered that it's so short and they've had to, you know, rearrange things around just to get the TV working for the first day before they could go out and buy another extension lead. So, uh, yeah, I feel it is a big downside. Some people might think I'm being petty, but a hell of a lot of you agree with me and think it should be longer. So that is the next downside of this TV. Right, next downside about this TV is that it gets confused about what's plugged into it. So when you have, say, like I have a external box, in this case, I have a SkyQ box, it will come up on the TV and will say SkyQ. At the moment, it's an Apple because I did have an Apple TV device connected. But anyway, it will normally say SkyQ. But for some 
bizarre reason, um, now and again, it will just turn around and decide that my Skybox is a Humax box or something completely different. It will still go to the same input and everything like that, but it will just actually label it up, label it up as something different, which again, it's only a petty little thing, but it's just a bit annoying that, you know, you turn on your Skybox and it says Humax or it says some other uh, make or model of box. Um, I've never had this problem with my B8 before, so why the B9 suffers from it, I've got no idea. Someone did put up some suggestions for settings and I have tried that and unfortunately that doesn't work. It just seems to um, want to play up occasionally. It's not, you know... A massive deal it's not all the time but still it's something just worth pointing out that you know sometimes it gets a little bit confused of what it's got plugged into it so that's uh, the next minor downside of this tv moving on and the next downside of this tv is image retention now image retention is different to burning as burning is a permanent thing where image retention is just the temporary retention of the image on the screen and over time it does go. Normally, you know, it's, it's only a few seconds but can be like a minute or so depending on how long you have had that image up on the screen. Now at the moment we have got like this yellow circle. Now if I was to leave this up for like sort of five minutes or so, you will be able to see it and, you know, for a good number of seconds, maybe, you know, 30 seconds or more. Um, if I back out of this now, I've only been playing this for like under a minute, you will probably see it only for a split second because it is hard to catch unless it's sort of on a darker background. But you've got to remember if you're, say, watching a film and there's been maybe something up on the screen for a number of minutes, it's bright and then it goes to a dark scene, you may see that image retention. So I'm just going to back out of it now. So just watch this space here and see if we can see it. And yeah, can you see it there? Right, just for a second, because it's uh, now gone back to something else. But yeah, oh, there we go. Look, we can see it now. Got that circle still there. And then that will remain there now, like I said, for a, a few seconds. Generally, if you go to see like another bright screen, that will sort of like clear it up as such. But when you go to a darker image, it seems to hang around for a, uh, a bit longer. So uh, yeah, not perfect, but that's just the uh, the nature of this technology, I suppose. And to be honest, I don't really notice it that much, but it's just something I thought I would just point out to you guys, because for some people that might be a big deal and uh, yeah, worth mentioning. So anyway, that's the uh, next downside of this TV. Right, next downside of this TV is, now it's something that a lot of people have complained to me about, so don't shoot the messenger. Personally, this one doesn't bother me that much, but a lot of people it has bothered and they've mentioned it to me and said, can you get rid of it? And that is the no signal image. Now, like I said, this doesn't bother me, but a lot of people have asked me, how do you get rid of that coming up on the screen when it says no signal? A lot of people want it that it will just come up saying no signal and then it will just leave it running as the art gallery in the background and that disappearing. But unfortunately, there is no way to stop it saying no signal. Well, not unless you plug something in and it gets a signal. Uh, the only thing you can do is turn off the gallery, but that no signal will remain and move around the screen. Again, it doesn't really bother me, but I thought I'd include it because so many people have said to me that it does a red in and they want to be able to turn that off and they can't. So that is the next little downside of this TV. Okay, next downside to this TV is, again, it's something I've mentioned in previous videos, and that is when it comes to wall mounting, it is a bit awkward due to two reasons. Now, first up is the fact that, as you can see, it's a beautifully slim TV, but all the guts of it are down the bottom, which include, obviously, the uh, screw holes for mounting this TV to a wall or wall bracket. Obviously, you know, you ain't gonna be able to screw into the back of the TV there, so they've gotta move them all the way down. But that means that, um, 
yeah, the mounting holes are very low down. So if you've previously had a TV up on the wall, there's a good chance this will end up sitting higher up the wall if you can't adjust the TV bracket. Um, because most TVs have them generally sort of in the center and these are a lot lower down. So that then just shifts the whole TV up. But also the other sort of downside when it comes to like wall mounting this TV or whatever is again, due to it being so thin, it is very fragile. So really it is a two man job to do just to make sure that, you know, you don't damage it in any way. Uh, you're gonna have to get a mate around and that to uh, put it up on the wall. Again, no, it's not a, a massive deal that. The wall mount, that's a bigger thing, I think, because potentially for some people, they're gonna have to move their whole wall mount down the wall if they wanna keep it at the same height. But yeah, getting up on the wall, getting a mate round isn't the biggest thing in the world. But again, it's something I want to point out because again, if you are buying this TV, you're going to want to know that um, before your TV turns up. So you can arrange to get some round to potentially give you a hand. So uh, yeah, that is the next downside about this TV. So on to the final worst thing about this TV. And that is that it is a right nag when it comes to updates. Now, if you turn off the automatic updates, which I always recommend due to the fact that there has been broken updates in the past, then this thing will constantly nag at you every time you turn the TV on to do the update. Now, other TVs may remind you once every couple of days or, you know, maybe once a day when you turn, to, turn on the TV, but this thing will do it every single time you turn the TV on. And it just gets really annoying. There's no way to turn it off to say, you know that there's an update you would think that maybe once you've confirmed it once yeah all right i know there's an update that'd be it but no it keeps going on and on and on i know again it's only a petty little thing but still it can be annoying and something worth pointing out so uh that is the final worst thing about this tv right so i just want to finish off by saying to you guys that even despite all those little downsides of this tv I still think that these LG OLEDs are the best TVs that I've ever tried out. You know, I would still have one at a drop of a hat and I do continue to own one. I have got a BA OLED and I've had that now for nearly a year and I absolutely love it. You know, the pros far outweigh the cons. So please, you know, don't be bashing me in the comments saying why you complain about these things. Like I said before, it's, you know, just giving both sides of uh, the coin, so to speak. And, you know, like I said, everything has got a downside, even if they are small ones. You know, some people people may think they are big enough to put them off the TV and that's fair enough. But like I said, for me, the, the pros far outweigh the cons and I would have one of these TVs any day of the week. So there you have it then, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed that video. And if you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up. And if you haven't already subscribed, then maybe think about subscribing for more of the same in the future. So thanks very much for joining me today and hopefully I'll catch you guys on the next one. Bye for now.